This is a really good question. I'm not going to waste any time to answer your question. The shebang is technically not required for any of those three. Uh, let's dive into it. So the commenter gives me three different examples and asks if the shebang is required. I'm going to be assuming the bash shell because I always talk about bash on this channel. And if you got recommended this video and you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm so sorry. But hopefully you enjoy and you at least find me entertaining. Let's talk about the first one. Source file.sh. If you're running this inside your shell, source will take a file, read through the file from top to bottom and execute all of that code in your current context, your current environment, your current shell process. It won't create a new child process. It will execute it in your current process. It does not need a shebang. It's going to interpret it as bash code if the bash shell is running it. Um, I believe the same is true in other shells, but I don't know other shells that well. I know bash. So if you run source file.sh, you do not need a shebang in there. The second one, dot slash file dot sh, you do need the executable bit on this. This is the only example where you need the executable bit or else your operating system will not actually ex execute it. You'll get a, what do you get, eperm, e no exec, I don't know. You get an error if you try to run dot slash file dot sh and you don't have the executable bit. But assuming you do have the executable bit, this is a really interesting one and I've done a deep dive of this in the past. If you don't have a shebang, your shell will execute it with its current interpreter. So like if you're running in bash, bash will try to run it as a bash script. You may have noticed this if you ever tried to dot slash something that's like a Python script and it doesn't have the Python shebang at the top and then it hangs because it tries to run import as a command. Yeah, it's super annoying. Um, this is a weird quirk. I was actually surprised to find that this is how it works. Um, but yeah, if you don't have the shebang there, it will try to execute it with your current shell. At least that's what bash will do. Um, and then the third example, bash space file.sh. You don't need a shebang there. You've explicitly called bash. Bash will not even look at the shebang. To bash's point of view, the shebang is just a comment. It'll just completely ignore it. So in your example, you don't need the shebang. In the second example, the dot slash file one, I would say you should have it there. That's where I would expect you to have it. I wouldn't want to rely on my current shell to execute it that way, um, but that's just me. I personally like to put the shebang in everything. Um, that way, you know, my editor knows how to highlight it. If I do have to execute it directly, it's there. Um, if it's extra, it just gets read as a comment. I personally like it everywhere, but do you technically need it? No, not at all.